It was 2018. I had just completed a UX bootcamp and finally finished my first portfolio. I thought it was truly a masterpiece. So good that whoever saw it would immediately bring me in for a job interview. So I got to work on my job search, which I thought would be quick and easy. I sent out about 100 applications and reached out to many different people on LinkedIn and then just waited for the responses to come in. But over the next few days, I realized no one was responding. And then a little bit later, the auto reply rejection emails came in. I was completely devastated. I thought it was just impossible to get hired as a junior designer. But now as I look back more than five years later as a senior designer, I can tell you that the main reason I was not getting job interviews was because of some major mistakes that I was making in my portfolio. So today, I'm gonna to show you what my portfolio looked like and I'm gonna point out exactly what those mistakes were so that you don't have to make those same mistakes in your own portfolio and it becomes much easier to become a UI UX designer. So let's check it out. So here is my first portfolio. And before getting into some of the details, I'll tell you that the main reason why I was not able to get interviews is because of two overarching problems. There's just a very poor presentation of the work that you'll see throughout here. And the quality of the designs themselves are very low. So generally for a portfolio to work, you're going to need to showcase great UI designs immediately that have a, an obviously great UX and the portfolio itself needs to look great and have a good UX. So mine had neither of those things. Now I'll show you exactly why. So right here on the homepage, there are two glaring UX flaws that an experienced designer could spot immediately. I have a button that you have to click to go to my work. So I'm, I'm making people have to dig through my site to actually see um, some of the work in the case studies. Ideally, that should be right here on the homepage. So you just scroll down a little bit and you start seeing work immediately. The other thing is I have this about me call to action right next to my work with an equal amount of visual emphasis placed on it. It is not important to see an about me section at, at this point in the journey. That's something that would usually come after seeing the, the work and the case studies and having some interest to actually learn more about me. Just those two mistakes alone likely made many people close my portfolio immediately and not even consider bringing me in for an interview. Then it's also worth noting some visual design choices that were, were not great. I chose a font called New Nido, which in my opinion just looks pretty bad and an experienced designer would probably never choose. And then up here at the top, I have my name and I have this red underline below it. It just looks like something that a newer designer was attempting to do to try to add some visual flair, but it just did not work. So those are the main things on this homepage. And now we're going to get into the my work section. There's a couple main problems on this page. One is that the cover images you see offer pretty much no value at all. So they're just a logo and a few words about what the company does. But ideally, at this point in the portfolio, you'd show, be showing big, beautiful UI screenshots so that when someone's getting it, looking at an overview of your case studies, they have a good idea about the overall quality of your work. And then you'd also want to include some text next to those images about what you did in, uh, in that particular project. But for me, I just put this quick little section of text below um, saying company name and like the, the main thing that I did. I'll show you an example of what I do in my current portfolio that I think is much better. So now what I do is I show the, the project and company a sentence about exactly what I did, my role, the skills used, and then a link to click on it. And I have a carousel of screenshots so you can get a really good idea about the overall quality of the UI without even needing to click into the case study. So I would highly recommend doing something like that on your portfolio as well and not doing what I did here. Now we'll click into my primary case study and I will break this down. Now, right away in this case study, there's more obvious problems that you can just spot immediately. 
at the top, this whole graphic is a little bit strange. It almost looks like a business card of, of some sort. And then I'm showing just a, a small glimpse of the final UI right here. Now, normally at the beginning of case studies, that's a great opportunity to showcase a whole nice collage of UI. I'll show you what I did in my current portfolio as a quick example. So I showed four large screenshots immediately. And here just showed a corner of the homepage. And then in the UI that you can see, there's some obvious problems here, like this search bar is oddly far away from the text above it. The text inside the search bar is too big. The search text is too big. This card right here is, looks out of place. There's these weird margins on the side. Um, that just goes into the whole overall low level of um, design skill. And then I have this don't want to read here's the gist section. Um, I also have a misplaced question mark at, at the end here. I just didn't proofread things properly. Um, but basically, I have this checklist of things that I did in the case study that doesn't actually show anything valuable. Um, any, anyone who's reading your case studies isn't looking to just make sure you did things. They're looking to make sure you did things well. So this isn't actually adding anything here. And then going down, I have these two sentences or these two sections that have just a quick sentence in each one. So we're taking up almost an, an entire um, height of the screen just for these two sections. There's way too much space between. I think these should, probably should have been uh, placed together. Another thing I, I did wrong is I should have talked about the outcome and the impact at the beginning of the case study. So the reader should know exactly what I accomplished without actually needing to read through the whole case study and go all the way to the bottom. That's one of the main things they're looking for to determine if they want to actually read more is what was actually accomplished in this case study. So definitely should have added that in and that's something that, that I added in my case studies now. Um, Another thing here is that these lines between each paragraph are, are very strange. It makes it look like this isn't one cohesive thing, that these are all just separate thoughts and ideas. And I also tried to make this whole case study more scannable by bolding something in every section. Um, I think I, I was kind of thinking in the right direction there with enhancing scannability, but it didn't, didn't quite work. So now what I do in my case studies is I put the main idea of the paragraph as the header for each section. So as you read through all the, the whole case study, if you just read the headers, you can get a pretty good idea of exactly what the case study was about. I have this section where I explain the problem about why this product exists, saying that seminars are a big deal in the jiu-jitsu community and they're widely attended by many athletes and that they're difficult to find out about. Many people will hear about them through word of mouth, but there's nowhere on the internet currently to see seminars in one location. I think that's actually a pretty good explanation of the problem and really justifies why this, this product, product exists and is worth solving. So that's probably one of the best things about this case study. And then I have this team and role section. Uh, there's a big problem here. And it is saying that the, the COO that I worked with guided my designs in terms of business goals. And the lead engineer guided my design in terms of technical specifications. I would say this isn't that bad, but it kind of makes it seem like I was just an order taker. This is just them telling me what I need and then me coming up with designs. Probably best not to come off like that in a case study. You, you really want to make it seem like there was more that you, you added and there weren't other people guiding your whole design process. And then in this section, um, this whole infographic just does not look very good. There's poor spacing, poor choice of icons and typography. And then I have this section about where I explain the early thoughts on the design. Basically what I'm saying here is that um, 
the engineer who's working on this wanted this to be a, a pretty easy to build minimum viable product. And that because he told me that I determined that we had some essential features that we would need like a profile page form uh, to post events, list of events and a checkout feature. But I don't ex explain exactly why those features were needed. Um, there's really just no rationale given in this section, but I think more rationale would have definitely made this a lot better. And then below, I have a research section where I talked about how I when interviewed five different people in the jujitsu community and talked about what I learned, but I didn't explain anything about a research methodology, questions I asked or anything like that. Just basically jump right into some main points that I came away with. So I'm not demonstrating any level of research expertise here whatsoever. Now we have this section where I talk about how I worked with the engineer to put together the final user flow. And in here, I say probably the worst thing in this entire portfolio. I say, I got my research findings together and went back to the engineer. I put a user flow together based on my early solution ideas so that he could start coding. Basically saying that I did absolutely nothing with the research and I just went with my first assumption. So just absolutely a terrible section here. And then below I show my user flow where it's in my bad handwriting. Um, this definitely should have been something I made in Figma since I don't have great handwriting. So this shouldn't be something just clearly on display. And then I have my wireframe section and talking about how I, I uh, put some of these ideas onto the screen in wireframes, but don't really explain exactly what I was trying to solve in the wireframes or any sort of like dilemma that I came up with. So not a great section here. And then I have the solution section, which is kind of actually getting in the right direction. Um, I talk about how we encountered a problem where people would want potentially want to post links to different events and we didn't have the ability to do that in our site. So talked about how uh, because of this discussion, we allowed users to post a, a, linked, um, a link that would redirect them to other sites so it can be kind of a central location um, to post these different links that are hosted on other sites or post a link to an event right there on the site. So I'm talking about a dilemma. I'm talking about how we work through this problem. So that's definitely in the right direction because those are the, the kinds of things you want to be writing about in a case study. Um, and then I talk about the feature set, but this isn't great because again, infographic doesn't look good. And I'm combining what I say in the infographic with what I'm saying in the paragraph. So the thing you read in the infographic is a continuation of the text above. That is definitely not great. Now we get into the section where I talk about the UI design. So as I was mentioning before, just a pretty low level of skill shown overall in uh, the designs and then the explanation of each screen I, I think is very basic so I, I say here i tried to make the screen visually appealing easy to understand and erase any doubt about what the company does especially with the first two things in there it should just go without saying that that's a thing i'm trying to do in my design so the sentence adds absolutely nothing. And then we're showing more screens that just don't look great. And that's kind of the gist of the rest of this case study here is basic explanations and screens that someone would probably determine to be very amateur looking. If I wanted to remake this case study to actually be able to get job interviews, there's a few main things that I would do. I would redesign all of this work that you see here 
using a design library. So I would download something like the Material Design UI Kit on Figma, which is available for free, and take out all of the components that I'm using in these designs, and replace it with these um, designs from that library that are proven to work and look great. So that would immediately boost the quality of the work. Another thing I would do is carefully study how more experienced designers write their case studies and some of the language that they use. And then I would try to implement that in my case studies. And I would also try to make it so that I'm including more rationale in, in each section and try to have more complex explanations for things that show that I do have a high level of design expertise. So I'd rewrite that. And then another thing is I would have ChatGPT edit everything that I write. I would tell it to uh, make all of this more concise and then use that in the case study. Now with uh, ChatGPT, there's absolutely no excuse for having terrible writing like I do in many of the sections in this case study. So with those improvements, I think I would actually start being able to get interviews and I wouldn't have to go through all the pain that I did when I was trying to apply for jobs with this portfolio. Now I'm going to show one more case study. A lot of these problems that I mentioned in the previous one exist in this one as well. So um, I'll just point out a few things since so many of this does just carry over. This case study talks about a group project that I did at my UX bootcamp. We had a real client that we did it for. It was uh, definitely a pretty good experience, but there's some big problems that I want to point out here. One is that in this problem section, I just use this infographic where I say engagement on their platform is low. They usually do not hear from alumni after graduation. This definitely should have been a more in-depth explanation about why this problem exists and why this company actually wants to solve this problem and what this would do for them. So big miss with the infographic there. Um, there are a couple things I did well. I talk about how we did some interviews with users here and determined that these are some of the problems that they face and why they aren't uh, continuing to come back. That's actually a pretty good thing to include. And another big problem in this case study is I'm talking about the solution section here and I call it interface design in this header at the top. But throughout this paragraph, I'm talking about UX things that we were, we were trying to figure out. So, the mismatch of the label here just shows a real lack of, of expertise in design. So that was a, a big problem. And then throughout here, there's a lot of the same problems that I was mentioning in the case study before. So this is another case study that likely would have made a recruiter or designer looking at this just put this right in the no pile. Another thing I, I wanted to mention is when I was making these, these case studies and getting this whole portfolio together, I actually did ask for feedback uh, from many experienced designers on this. They read through my case studies and they likely spotted many of these problems that I had pointed out because they're very obvious to me five years later. I think they were just simply too nice and didn't want to hurt my feelings to, to tell me some of this harsh feedback. This made it so I had to figure out many of these things on my own through trial and error and made this a much longer process than it needed to be. So if you wanted to hire me to review your portfolio, I can promise you I'm going to tell you exactly what you need to hear so you can get a job sooner and avoid a lot of this pain that I went through in finding a job and actually figuring out how to make a great portfolio that gets job interviews. So if you want more details on that, check out the description below. So that is all I have for you today. And thank you for watching. Um, definitely appreciate your time. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing because I'm going to be coming out with a lot of new content very soon. 
that is just meant to offer as much value as possible to newer designers. So thanks for watching. Have a great day.